resistance from uh, uh, the other fascists in Europe, from Hitler and from Mussolini. The uh, Spanish Republic, uh, they're thought to be too uh, socialistic, possibly communist. No one in Europe is going to want to uh, assist them, except Russia. Russia will assist the Spanish Republic. So if I have a question, it says, who provided the only official support for the Spanish Republic is going to be the communists. It's going to be the Soviet Union, Russia. Now, what, uh, what about the Lincoln Battalion? The Lincoln Battalion was uh, a number of volunteers from America, and these uh, volunteers were uh, two to three hundred in number. These are volunteers from America, not part of the government, people who simply went over to assist the Spanish Republic in the fight against fascism. They were smart enough to understand the dangers of fascism in Europe at the time. Now, the revisionist view of this is 2,000 to 3,000. And that means that they've just redefined the term. Two to 3,000 is an indication of everyone around the world who volunteered, who went to assist the Spanish Republic in the fight against uh, Francisco Franco, the fascist. So uh, again, the Spanish Civil War, there's a Lake Battalion for you. Then the Munich Conference. The Munich Conference is about Czechoslovakia. So uh, the Sudetenland region, this is about a third of Czechoslovakia. Hitler has his troops on the border ready to take it. And at the Munich Conference, Neville Chamberlain is going to step up before the podium. He's going to have a sheet of paper. He's going to say, I have in my hands peace in our time. Peace in our time. And so he's going, uh, Neville Chamberlain's going to kind of deal with Hitler uh, to avoid war by giving Hitler a third of Czechoslovakia. Now Hitler's going to take the rest in the spring. But uh, this is the prime example of appeasement. Neville Chamberlain, peace in our time. Um, and again, this uh, deals uh, with the Czechoslovakia. So uh, we're good on that. Uh, there's Neville Chamberlain, peace in our time. Battle for Britain. The Battle for Britain is in the skies over Britain, and the uh, radar is the device by uh, which uh, uh, the English will be victorious. Radar. Radar. They'll defeat the uh, Luftwaffe. So uh, good on that. Royal Air Force radar. Tokyo napalm. In the spring of 1945, they used incendiary bombs against the Japanese in Tokyo. Fire bombs. And these fire bombs are going to kill 83,000 people. And I just mention it as kind of in contrast to the atomic bomb. Because I've had colleagues say, oh, the atomic bomb is evil, and it's this and that, and, and all of that. And then when I might ask them about, uh, what about the napalm in Tokyo, 83,000 people die, they'll say, well, war is hell, and that's just what happens in war. And so I was just trying to use it as that contrast. Where I come from, when that many people die, um, there's not a good side and a bad side. Um, and so I kind of used it in that. So you want to be aware of incendiary bombs, uh, 83,000 dead in Tokyo, um, and I compare it to the atomic bomb. And those of you who were uh, with, uh, with us for the uh, movie uh, uh, the other day on Radio Bikini, you have a really fair idea now how little we knew about the atomic bomb when we dropped it on the Japanese. So uh, it might put it in a different light for you than what you might have previously viewed it. So, um, John Foster Dulles. Dulles is the uh, Secretary of State under Eisenhower. There's a question that's going to ask you, uh, who's the uh, major contributor to the foreign policy in the 1950s? And it's going to be uh, John Foster Dulles. He comes up with liberation and, and Matthew retaliation and all those other policies. John Foster Dulles. The St. Louis was that ship that left Hamburg, Germany uh, right after the night of broken glass. 900 desperate Jews wanting asylum, promised asylum in, uh, uh, in Central America. It ended up being a hoax. Kicked out of Miami by the immigration officials back to Europe. And the traditional view is they were rounded up and sent to the concentration camps. The um, revisionist view is that they had money, bought their way to France, didn't get sent to the concentration camps until very late in the war. Thus, there were a number of them that survived the concentration camps. Okay, to St. Louis, 900 and some deaths for Jews looking for asylum. Uh, Six million Jews died in the Holocaust. The final solution is Hitler's, uh, Hitler's final solution is uh, simply uh, the Holocaust. Uh, remember Hitler's uh, war aims, he, uh, or Hitler's uh, aims. Uh, 
he wants to uh, eliminate the people in Eastern Europe and those he views to be uh, uh, inferior. So uh, the final solution is, is absence the Holocaust. Operation Magic, the attempt to decipher the Japanese coast before uh, Pearl Harbor. The um, operation is successful, though Pearl Harbor occurs anyway. Okay. Uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, December 7, 1941, which is on the test. Arsenal for Democracy, not on the test. Tripartite Pact, that means three. This is the uh, Axis powers. This would be Japan, this would be Germany, and this uh, would be Italy. Axis powers. Manhattan Project. The, um, Albert Einstein's catalyst for this, and uh, this is the atomic bomb program. Uh, Hiroshima Nagasaki, where the atomic bombs are dropped. That's on the test. Uh, appeasement. I'll take you down to the uh, bottom of the uh, lecture study guide where it says, why did England and France appease Germany? And uh, you'll see that uh, on the uh, World War II handout. And this is item number three. There's, uh, uh, let's see, three, six, seven uh, reasons. I'll have a uh, multiple choice question. It'll ask you uh, all the following or, uh, reasons for the appeasement of, uh, of Germany except. So I checked out on the World War II uh, handout. And again, I'm going to try to do this real quick because I've got this other stuff that I want you to hear before you get out of here today. You've heard most of this, you know, in class, I hope. So, um, so let's see. Cold War. The Cold War is on the test. Uh, probably a multiple choice question. <laughs> the start of the Cold War uh, handout. It gives you the definition and the characteristics. Okay. And let's see, then I've got uh, the uh, charters, the conferences. This is, uh, deals with uh, Casablanca, Tehran, Moscow, Yalta, and Potsdam. And what you need to be able to do for those conferences and agreements and all that other stuff is to be able to say, um, these are World War II uh, situations, you need to be able to say, um, where did it occur? Who are the participants? What happened? I'm going to do one of these because, again, I need to get to the, uh, there's an essay on the uh, comprehensive. I'll be able to talk to, talk to you about that. Um, so uh, I'm going to do Potsdam. This is in Germany. Uh, we're going to see some new faces at Potsdam. Harry Truman's going to be, uh, he's now President of the United States after the has died in April. We're going to see Stalin there. We're going to see uh, Churchill there. Churchill is going to be uh, removed from office in an election, and he's going to be replaced by Richard Attlee. So I've got a question that says, all the following were popped on except. That except is probably Franklin Delano Roosevelt because he has passed in April of 45. Now, I've also uh, a couple other things. So what happens? Well, what happens is that uh, the baby's been delivered. The atomic bomb has been tested successfully, a message to, uh, to uh, Truman. We also uh, um, are going to have the Potsdam Declaration. The Potsdam Declaration is a warning to Japan that we have the atomic bomb and we intend to use it. Now, they don't tell them what we have, uh, but uh, there's this announcement by Truman. The Japanese need to surrender. Uh, if they do not surrender, they will face prompt and utter destruction. So uh, that is the warning for the atomic bomb. Uh, I know it's not much of a warning, but it's a warning nonetheless. Uh, as such. So uh, that's an example of what we're looking for. So be able to go through the Atlantic chart and the others and say where, who, and uh, what result. And again, uh, there's probably four or five questions from there. So check, uh, check that out. And uh, Treaty of Portsmouth. Uh, the Treaty of Portsmouth is from the uh, 1904 uh, Russo-Japanese War. Uh, 1905, you have the Treaty of Portsmouth. It's Portsmouth, New Hampshire. The arbitrator is uh, the President of the United States, uh, Theodore Roosevelt. The Japanese go home angry. They didn't feel they were treated very fairly by the arbitrator, the President of the United States. So uh, we've got that. And let's see, I've been in this other... CIA, Central Intelligence Agency. Pick up on that again. There's Potsdam. We're good. Marxist Destiny, 1946. Stalin says, I'm going to go out and spread communism around the world. The response to this is uh, Churchill's armed curtain speech. Yes, the Cold War is going on. Europe's divided between us and them. Uh, Francis Gary Powers. 
The U-2 uh, spy plane pilot was shot down east of the Ural Mountains in the Soviet Union. The spy plane pilot, U-2 pilot. Department of, uh, let's see, National Security Act. The National Security Act on the uh, test, and I'm looking at it uh, as uh, having three uh, parts to it. The, um, this could appear as a multiple choice question or as an ID question. If you know the answer, you can do either one here, okay? So uh, the, the National Security Act is about reformatting the government so we're fighting communism. It creates the Department of Defense. It creates the CIA. It creates the National Security Council, NSC, think tank for the president. Wilson's quote is on the test. Sputnik is the first satellite ever in outer space, and it's the um, uh, si it's, um, of the Soviet Union, Sputnik. Uh, NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And uh, this is a possible identification question. So NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This is de defending Western Europe from the Communist Europe. Now, the Communists have their own uh, NATO, and the Communist NATO is known as the Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact. So I'm going to ask you on the test, the Russian NATO is, it would be the uh, uh, Warsaw Pact, there to defend the Communists of uh, Eastern Europe from the uh, democracy of Western Europe. So we both have a similar type of, uh, of uh, alliances. I've got NFC 68. NFC 68 is uh, National Security Council, paper number 68. And this uh, is that the United States has looked around the world to see who's there to fight communism. They can't find any takers for the United States. Everyone else is weak after World War II. So we become the policemen of the world against communism. This is the NFC 68. I've got the uh, fall of uh, China. With the fall of China, we're going to see uh, Mao Zedong, the communist leader, is going to drive Chiang Kai-shek, the... Uh, a uh, leader in China that um, supported the United States. Chiang Kai-shek is going to be forced to a uh, place called Taiwan. At the time it's called Formosa, Taiwan. So we've got Mao Zedong. Mao is going to take control of China, uh, bring it under uh, control of the communists. And uh, Chiang Kai-shek, who's a fascist who we support, is going to make his way to uh, Taiwan. Um, and that's just uh, what the Taiwan is of uh, today. So, uh, fall of, uh, of uh, China. Now, remember also the fall of China is placed into something else we talked about, and that's the Red Scare. Remember that fear of communism, that mass hysteria of communism. So, the Red Scare is uh, uh, caused because the Russians get the atomic bomb early. It's uh, caused because, 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 because of the, uh, <laughs> the uh, because I'm going so damn fast here. Uh, it's also the fall of China, and it's the Korean War. So the Red Scare, Korean War, fall of China, Russians get the atomic bomb early, it creates the uh, Red Scare, Joe McCarthy's, uh, i got a list of 200 uh, known communists in the State Department. So we're good on uh, that. Korean War, Mao Zedong. August 8, 1945, uh, the Russians enter the war, uh, World War II against uh, the Japanese. It's also the day the uh, Japanese try to uh, get the Russians to pass on a uh, pass on a conditional surrender to the United States, which they refuse to do. Uh, let's see, Ike Eisenhower, we'll get on that. Um, liberation, mutual defense pacts, uh, containment. Uh, um, let me uh, let me run through those. I got a, I got a, um, a uh, let me pass by those right now. I've got an uh, essay question about this, and I want to talk about the essay question for you. It'll be better when you hear it in that context. Okay? So I've got that. Uh, let me go down to uh, Afghanistan. And Afghanistan uh, is the Russian Vietnam. And also, uh, remember, Afghanistan is where we ended up at after 9 11. Um, and uh, the Afghanis were using uh, our own weapons upon us as we'd given them weapons to fight the Russians. And Afghanistan is an example of sharing a common enemy and then turning around and fighting the <coughs> individual you've been aligned with uh, when you're fighting the uh, communists. So Afghanistan. 
Also, for Afghanistan, there's something called the Carter Doctrine. And the Carter Doctrine, Carter thought it was an invasion of Afghanistan. Again, I believe it's an invitation uh, to Afghanistan. Carter was fearful that uh, the Russians had their eye on the oil fields in the Persian Gulf. So it's a warning to the Russians, if you come into the Persian Gulf, we'll have war. So that's our Afghani uh, two situations there. And the Teton is simply uh, coexistence. Coexistence between the Soviet Union and the United States. Starts with Eisenhower, or starts with LBJ and um, Khrushchev, ends with Ronald Reagan when Reagan comes to power, because Reagan views the Russians to be the evil empire, and he's not going to be friendly to them in the beginning. More uh, bang for a buck is mass retaliation. Let me throw that in. Missile gap is uh, Kennedy's uh, election in 1960. He claims the Russians have more uh, weapons than we do. It's, a, uh, it's not true, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Kennedy runs on that situation. Kennedy starts the arms race because of that. He promises to build uh, missiles when he comes into power. He comes into power, he builds missiles, he starts the arms race, leads us to the point where we all have uh, over 10,000 nuclear weapons, Russians and Americans. Uh, each of us possess that many. Uh, the Contras were the, I doubt that's on the test, but they were the uh, uh, group supported by the United States against the Sandinistas in uh, Nicaragua. Uh, communist social system power, uh, Ortega, and, uh, uh, not Ortega, but uh, a communist uh, leader was in uh, power. And uh, uh, so we uh, supported the uh, Contras. If you wanted to hear uh, some of that, you could listen to the clash of the CB called the Sandinistas. That's who they were fighting the Contras. Uh, Daniel Ortega was in charge of uh, Nicaragua at that time. Uh, Carter Doctor's Marshall Plan. Marshall Plan's on the test, and the uh, Marshall Plan uh, is the European Recovery Program. We're going to re rebuild Europe. We've got like $12.4 billion to spend the money in the United States to uh, get uh, great jobs and return to servicemen, and uh, going to rebuild Europe. Marshall Plan, European Recovery Program. Berlin blockade goes back to uh, Germany's been divided into two pieces. Here's Berlin, it's a free city. One side is democracy, one side is communist. Stalin places a roadblock. This is the Berlin blockade. We end up buying supplies into, um, into uh, West Berlin. This is called the Berlin Airlift. The question would ask you, what are we airlifting in the Berlin Airlift? We're not sending in troops. We're not evacuating people. We're sending in supplies, coal, food, medicine, things like that. So uh, the Berlin Airlift, that's tied into the Berlin blockade. Uh, there's the National Security Council, there's December 7th, there's Warsaw Pact, we did that. I'm going to do these others, um, we'll do counterinsurgency here in a minute. Uh, Cuban Missile Crisis and the Bay of Pigs. I would imagine uh, both of these will be on the test. Uh, on some tests will be the, um, uh, it will uh, be, an identific well, it'll be an identification question on the other test. The other one will be an identification question. There'll be a multiple choice question also. So one between these two, they're both going to be on the test, and uh, so uh, they're tied together as such. Bay of Pigs invasion, planned by Eisenhower for the invasion of uh, Cuba to overthrow Fidel Castro. Cuban exiles trained in Guatemala by uh, uh, the CIA. Kennedy comes into power, likes the plan, wants to implement it, gets it, uh, the invasion uh, started, then he gets cold feet. He uh, does not provide any type of military support for the uh, the amphibious invasion. Um, Castro is, uh, is there waiting with his troops and, and he hammers the uh, Cuban exiles. Now, uh, the next thing is the Cuban Missile Crisis. Well, the Cuban Missile Crisis, if you want to avoid a, uh, a major uh, um, war, is what's going to happen. The missiles have been put in Cuba. The missiles were intended to stop the Americans from ever invading again Cuba. Kennedy's going to confront uh, Khrushchev. It appears that Kennedy's going to take a step back. In all actuality, he's not taking a step back. Our, uh, Kennedy's, uh, let me do this again, I'll do it quick. Kennedy's going to appear to uh, stood tall and Khrushchev step back. And that's why the example for brinksmanship um, is uh, Kennedy, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. In all actuality, we discover later that both have taken a step back. So um, it's not a very good example after 1989. 
So Bay of Pigs invasion, failed invasion, attempting to take over Castro, Cuban Missile Crisis, again, uh, missiles in Cuba, uh, brings us to the apostle brink of war. Uh, they both agree to uh, step back, remove the missiles from Cuba. Kennedy agrees never to invade, the United States will never invade Cuba again. So we're good on that. Hoover's offer to England. Uh, Hoover's offer to England is uh, right under the, the characterization for War to Peace again. Young plan, um, Dahl's plan. Uh, 1929, the British reject an offer from Hoover, President Hoover, to trade their debt for uh, British Honduras to Muta and Trinidad. Uh, seems rather obscure, but in all actuality it tells us at this time the United States are still imperialists. They're still willing to take from third parties other countries in exchange for debt or uh, whatever else. So uh, check that out. And I got the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. The Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere is the uh, Japanese Manifest Destiny. Military Industrial Complex Eisenhower warning about the buildup of uh, massive uh, amounts of weapons during times of peace. The prime example of that from Reagan's first term in office. Non-aggression pact, the Nazi-Soviet pact, that's uh, uh, it's going to be uh, uh, the Nazis and the uh, communists. So I'll ask you on the staff, if I ask you this, it'll be uh, who are the members of the non-aggression pact in 1939? Soviet Union and Germany. And uh, let's see, I did the baby's been delivered. Hitler's foreign policy aims on the uh, World War II handout is item number two. Check that out. Uh, let's see, I've got... Um, uh, how did the United States officially end World War I? We ended World War I uh, not by signing the Treaty of Versailles, but Lord G. Harding signed, President Harding signed a, a treaty on, in 1921 that stated war with Germany was over. It was a, uh, just an agreement uh, uh, drawn up uh, by Congress. So uh, uh, Harding was the individual that we're dealing with on that. And independent internationalism. This is also from War to Peace, where it says the United States isolation is misleading. The United States is not an isolationist country. We're not back in America after World War I like an ostrich with our head in the sand, uh, not paying attention to the rest of the world. We're out spending money around the world. We don't join the, the other uh, clubs in the world because we don't want them to tell us what to do. We're just to become the most powerful nation in the world, and we don't want any uh, limitations at this particular time. That's independent internationalism. We're not isolationists. And I did uh, England and France appease this Germany. So let me run through this other quickly because I want to I want to really spend this time with you on the uh, on the uh, comprehensive portion. Um, so here we uh, go. I am not going to have Petrograd on the uh, on the task. The Mensheviks are the moderate Marxists. They start the uh, Russian Revolution. And then the re revolution is taken over very quickly by the radical uh, Marxists, the radical communists, and that's the Bolsheviks. So just like in the French Revolution, the moderate group starts the revolution, and then the uh, radicals come in in the second stage. And then we never get to the third stage. Okay. So we're good on that. Totalitarian emphasis is not on the test. The White Army is the, uh, in the Russian Civil War, the White Army is the army that's opposed to the Red Army. The Red Army is the Communists. They lose, the White Army. Man of Steel is uh, Stalin. Stalin. Uh, the Black Shirts were the supporters of Mussolini. These are the reading questions. The Black Shirts are the supporters of Mussolini. Hitler's uh, troops uh, uh, supporters were Brown Shirts. Uh, uh, Chiang Kai-shek supporters in China were the blue shirts. He's a fascist also. All the fascists are shirt colors. So uh, that's the Italians. Pope Pius XI, the Lateran Accord. The Lateran Accord is uh, an agreement between the Roman Catholic Church and Mussolini in Italy. Mussolini is going to give the Roman Catholic Church money. He's going to make the uh, Roman Catholic faith the faith of uh, the state religion of Italy. And he's also going to create Vatican City, the Vatican City. Vatican City, that separate entity that's con uh, controlled by the Pope, by the Roman Catholic Church, that was uh, from uh, Mussolini. What's Mussolini going to get from the Roman Catholic Church? The Roman Catholic Church is uh, going to agree that they're not going to uh, criticize him or condemn him for any actions he might take. Big mistake. 
the mistake. They're still apologizing about that today. So uh, that's uh, the latter end, of course. Battle of grain is for self-sufficiency in Italy. Uh, the idea that they're going to be able to feed themselves. Everything else goes uh, uh, to hell when, uh, when they do that. They can only concentrate on one thing at a time. Spartacists revolt. Uh, the Spartacist party is the Communist Party in Germany. The uh, Weimar Republic, that's that new German Republic that comes at the end of World War I. November criminals, not on the test. Uh, Joseph Goebbels, Goebbels, not on the test. Uh, Nazi, not on the test. Mein Kampf uh, is uh, Hitler's book. He writes twice in prison for the uh, failed beer hall push, an attempt to uh, take over the uh, German government. They throw him in prison. Hitler writes Mein Kampf. That's the reference book for the uh, Nazi movement. Hitler is the uh, SS. He's in charge of the SS after the uh, Night of the Long Knives. And um, that's uh, the SS is Hitler's uh, private stormtroopers, private army. It's his private army. Uh, Break the Wrath, that's John Steinbeck's book about the Dust Bowl out in Kansas. For Whom the Bells Toll, that's Ernest Hemingway's book about the Spanish Civil War. Fuhrer is the title that Hitler uses. Uh, Mussolini would use El Duce, which would be the leader. So that's his title, but instead of being president, he's Fuhrer. Um, Gestapo would be the secret police. The Night of the Broken Glass is the night that, uh, if you see Schiller's list, when the uh, um, uh, the stormtroopers go in to the ghetto where the Jews live, beat up the Jews, put the Star of David on their businesses, uh, start to deny them uh, civil rights and civil liberties. Uh, not in the broken glass. Peace land of bread is um, um, Lenin's uh, slogan for the uh, Russian Revolution. Okay. Leon Trotsky is uh, the muscle of the uh, of the uh, uh, Russian Revolution. Lenin's the brains. Trotsky's the muscle. The military. Portion. The Wasteland, this is T.S. Eliot's book about the collapse of European civilization after World War I. You'll see it reflected in the art at the time. Animal Farm, how many people read Animal Farm? Yeah, great. Animal Farm, uh, uh, Orwell's book uh, uh, dealing with uh, Stalin and, and uh, that uh, situation. Uh, 1984, that's Orwell's book also. Big Brother's watching you. Hey, Big Brother's good morning watching you. Uh, Big Brother's listening to all your uh, phone messages and everything else. It's called the Patriot Act. Uh, 1984 is also a David Bowie album, uh, if you know that. Okay. You should know that. Uh, Lennon's Opportunity. Lennon's Opportunity. This is a crazy plan that works. Uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II and uh, his military officials are saying, what can we do to upset the Tsar in Germany? What can we do that would create chaos or, or disrupt the Tsar? They come up with this plan and say, well, you've got that uh, fugitive, that guy they exiled from, uh, from Russia, and his name's Lenin. He's a, uh, a revolutionist. Why don't we find him, put him on a boxcar, a train, send him to Russia and release him? Maybe he can bring down the government. They do, and he does. It's a great plan. Don't ever count on that happening. It's a great plan. So uh, that's uh, Lenin's uh, opportunity. Now, the comprehensive portion. We'll do this, this essay first. Got two essays. You're going to answer one for 30 points. So, I'm just going to tell you the damn questions. How's that? Okay? Here we go. First one is... Um, Explain the foundation of Western civilization. Explain the contributions and importance uh, today. For that uh, particular question, I got the other question about the Cold War. So uh, this is just for those of you who were yearned for the uh, earlier portion of the uh, class here, or whatever. This might be easier, it might be harder, so this is the deal. The foundation of Western civ. Remember we came here with those foundation blocks. Rise of civilization. Hebrews. Greeks. Romans. Christianity. Then we had that mortar, that thousand-year period of, uh, of the uh, Dark Ages or Middle Ages. So we're talking about the foundation blocks of Western Civ. These are the foundation blocks of Western Civ. If I'd answer this in a, uh, in a uh, essay question, I'd come in and say, you know, the rise of civilization uh, starts with the Paleolithic Age, uh, when people were uh, the Old Stone Age, they were nomads. It's followed by the Neolithic Age, which is Neo-New. And this is the rise of farming and villages. It's followed by uh, civilization itself, the rise of uh, civilization in Egypt and in Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers. 
the uh, Hebrews uh, give us a format of religion. One God, monotheistic, a uh, God of mercy, a God who's transcendent, above all, subject to none. The uh, Greeks are going to give us democracy. The Romans are going to give us law. The um, uh, Christianity is going to give us the idea of global religion. Because Rome falls from Christianity stands strong. It's still with us today. It's one of the major success stories in the world ever. So, uh, uh, global religion, which means as Western civic expands, Christianity will always follow. The cross will uh, always follow the uh, flag, uh, what will happen. Okay? And then the other part of this says, and the importance today. She just simply come in and make the importance today. Um, the idea of law. Uh, well, uh, much of our law derives from the Romans. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, much of their laws derive from the Romans also. Uh, the uh, Greeks, the democracy, what we cherish uh, today, what we're willing to fight in Greece for, uh, where Greek democracy came from, we're willing to uh, uh, drive the uh, Islam out, we're willing to drive, uh, uh, get to the communists out of there. Uh, the Hebrews, this is the uh, format of religion for the three major religions in Western Syria, Christianity, Islam, and uh, uh, Judaism. And then the rise of civilization, you've got to start someplace. Okay? This is the start. Okay. So that's one question. The, uh, discuss the, this is the, uh, the other one. Discuss the Cold War rivalry with the, with the Soviet Union, Russia. Explain the different foreign policies, approaches, and results taken by Cold War presidents. I wanted to give you something that's simply what we're dealing with right now. So this isn't learning anything else. You know all of this stuff for the 100-point uh, the test. And so if I was going to do this, I'd come in, I'd do an introduction, i kind of define what the Cold War is, which we talked about earlier, definition. I'd come in and say, oh, foreign policies. So what you're going to do in your Cold War notes is simply come in and we've got our first policy, and this is containment. Uh, we're going to contain the communists. We've got, um, and for these policies, remember for the test, we were going to say, uh, whose policy is it? What is the policy? What's the example? So for containment, we simply say it's containing the communists, not letting them expand. Starts with Truman. That's always a policy of the United States towards communism. It's always containment. We've got some examples. Truman Doctrine, military assistance to Greece and Turkey. We've got the Marshall Plan, the European Recovery Program, it's going to rebuild Europe to contain the communists. Then we jump into the Eisenhower years. And we come up, uh, you could make the transition. John Foster Dulles is the mastermind of these, uh, of these policies. And so you come in with liberation. We're going to liberate the communists. We're going to roll them back. Eisenhower Dulles. Does it work? No, there's this place called East uh, Germany and Hungary where it doesn't work. Mass retaliation, we're bang for a buck. We're going to rely on uh, atomic weapons as opposed to conventional forces. Brinksmanship, we're going to bring those Ruskies to the brink of war. They're going to back down uh, because they're godless communists. Uh, best example of this is going to be, El uh, going to be uh, Kennedy in the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, Dulles, he has these defense pacts, mutual defense pacts, modeled after NATO. And... Um, then we get down to uh, uh, Kennedy, counterinsurgency. Uh, Green Berets, to train other people to defend themselves. First used in Vietnam. Let me tell you, it didn't work very well. We ended up sending our troops in. All we realized is they couldn't defend themselves, so we went in to defend them. In 1975, we're gone. So, this is um, uh, the um, deal here, and uh, let me read the question again. Discuss the Cold War rivalries uh, with the Soviet Union, Russia. Explain the different foreign policies, approaches, results taken by the Cold War president. So uh, I conclude with just like a conclusion, and I basically uh, say uh, something to the point that all these policies, aside from containment, were just uh, uh, driven by politics and, and uh, factors like that. And they're all failed policies, aside from containment. I'll leave it up to you if that worked. You heard China fell. So. Okay? That's worth 30 points. Now there's 20 points left. And here they come. There's identification questions. There's 10. You're going to answer 5. They're worth 4 points apiece. I'm going to use some ideas from the um, uh, UCC 21, which we've been talking about. And so I'm going to uh, use the ones that we've probably been struggled with. We use some of those. 
primary sources, first-hand evidence, first-hand accounts. I've talked about historiography, the study of history, not the writing of history, but the study of history and the methods of history. Revisionism. Revisionism is the idea of replacing one interpretation with another, not in replacing one source with another. Revisionism isn't about sources, it's about interpretation. Um, uh, so those are the kind of things. Oh, the other one is that uh, what determines the, the uh, uh, source, the historical question you're asking. What are you trying to uh, uh, achieve or learn? So I've got two or three off of there out of the ten. Okay? Uh, then I've got some of our early things we talked about that I consider to just be the main situation of all this. So I got a couple things from Origins. Uh, Leaky's uh, thing attached to the, her, uh, the start of the course here. Uh, something about the dinosaurs, possibly. Uh, explain uh, the uh, extinction of the dinosaurs. What does that mean to us today? Dinosaurs die in climate. It gets too cold and it gets too warm. Uh, what do we got? We got this global, uh, we got this uh, um, climate change uh, deal, global uh, uh, climate change going on. We talked about nuclear winter, which would bring us to cold. We talked about, uh, also talked about the ozone, um, uh, depleting the ozone with uh, aer aerosol cans. So, uh, so what does it mean to the world? So we learned something from the dinosaurs. I've also got a very abstract question. What is the uh, final word in origins? That, um, again, this is a uh, uh, thousand page book. And remember, this is the end of the book. And uh, I said, uh, you're on top of the uh, Empire State Building. A wind has swept you off. And you're falling to, uh, to a crash on the concrete. It's called gravity. But uh, uh, what would be the last words you'd uh, uh, whip around or yell out? And we all agree it's oh something. And uh, something like that. So. Uh, and then what kind of punctuation would you have? Uh, punctuation. Would it be a, a period or would it be a mushroom cloud? Would it be an aerosol can? Uh, what, kind of, uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of punctuation might you have on that? So this is a question where there's no right answer. Where you get marked off on this is that deal that we always have in history in our own personal lives. You say, this is what I think. You know, nobody gives a damn what you think unless you have something to back it up. And you can say, I think this because. So you'll say, I think the last word would be, and then you tell me what. Okay? And that's what people like to hear anyway. It's, everybody's got an opinion, but everybody wants to know what that opinion might be. So give me the last one here. Don't get excited yet. This is the last call here. Okay. And uh, so I've got something like what I talk about, classical humanism and uh, faith. Faith, classical humanism. Talked about that. That's on the test. Uh, had some general information, a uh, general deal, like industrial revolution, shift from hand tools to power tools, machine power replaces animal power. Had imperialism, uh, one country controls another country politically, economically, and culturally. Had this guy named Eli Whitney, which changed the, the history of the United States with the cotton gin, interchangeable parts. Had a war uh, set off in uh, May 14th and 15th, 1948, in Israel. Israel gets its uh, freedom, the next day the Arabs attack. And then I've got uh, Darwinism and social Darwinism. Darwinism, natural selection, uh, Herbert Spencer, uh, social Darwinism, survival of the fittest. Whether you're surviving because of your physical uh, situation or your uh, economic situation. And then finally I have, um, as another possibility, the modern state system. Remember, the modern state system. Who could forget it? Uh, the balance of power. All countries deserve the right to exist uh, uh, regardless of the ability to defend themselves. All countries have the right to make their own foreign policy. Those are some examples, main examples. There's enough of them on there that you'll be able to handle that no problem. And to quote the Grateful Dead, what a long, strange trip it's been. Take care. Peace. See you next time. On